Hello, beautiful community. Welcome to this month's edition of the Nourishing Woman podcast, where we are having conversations to really uh, nourish woman, body, mind, and spirit. Today, I am so excited because I have a really special person to introduce you to, and I just can't express to you enough um, how impressed I am with Joan Godbold, and she is just somebody, you know, as soon as I met her, um, I was really interested in her work, and as soon as I met her, I could see right away she is someone who doesn't just show up to work, but actually um, shows up to serve in a really big way, and is really interested in getting to the understanding of why why what she does is helping people so that she can always be improving her, her art and her healing processes. And it's just for me, so inspiring. And I just um, really get excited when there are people like her out in the world. So she is an EMDR therapist, um, actually a therapist of of many different uh, kinds. And she spent, um, she's been in it nearly a decade, has a variety of experiences in different types of uh, settings, and has really been able to develop her herself and her tools based on the trauma and the attachment um, styles that she has seen in her clients. And so taking what she has learned, she's always, you know, growing and um, refining in a way that never stops learning and, and bringing a different level of um, care and professionalism to the people that she serves. So that is why I'm so excited um, to bring you her to today. And I really feel like she has so much uh, knowledge about this missing piece that I keep talking about, the, the little known secret, so to speak, when it comes to being able to transform, whether that is fixing your relationship with food or your the way you show up in your relationships or the way you show up in any area of your life. If you want to change it, you have to go down to your nervous system, to your experiences of the past, to the traumas that you have experienced, and we all have at some level. So to be willing to look at those things and to understand the role your nervous system plays in the bigger picture is something that this woman really has a grasp of and and can help us understand how things like EMDR can help us um, regulate our nervous system and heal from some of the stuff that is keeping us stuck. So with all of that being said, Joan, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here, for being who you are, the work you do in the world. It is inspiring, to say the least. Well, thank you. Thank you for such a nice introduction. I really appreciate that. And um, I am definitely passionate about my craft. I'm also a, a lifelong learner. I love learning and I love refining and, and learning how to do things better and more efficiently. And so you nailed that on the head because I do love, it's a, I, I think it's a lifelong process, right? The yeah. learning aspect. Yeah. Um, and that's what makes you so good at what you do. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. I've got a curious mind. Yep. So, yep. And it's, it's obvious happening. from the, uh, from the first two minutes of speaking to you that this is who you were. So oh, it really shines thank through. You. Thank you yeah. for such a nice introduction. I really appreciate it. And thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm absolutely. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to dive in because yeah. When I, I actually um, have a lot of success, some really big shifts in my life that happened because of EMDR. And when I mentioned that, I realized, you know, I see that look over people's faces, like, what is that? You know, (laughs) and, and it, you know, it's just not something that, that, that many people know about. So I'm excited to bring that um, to, you know, more awareness around it. And I don't do a very good job of explaining it because obviously, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, well-versed in, in the terminology and all that. So I'd love to start by giving the audience just a basic understanding of what it is, how it's useful. Mm -hmm. And then we can talk a little bit more about, um, you know, how we would use it in the setting, like to create change, like in it with unwanted patterns with food. So what is the MDR? So you are not the only person that kind of eyes glaze over or look kind of confused or bewildered when I bring up EMDR, right? And so it's a long science name. So the the acronym stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. And so um, it is an evidence-based theory, which is very cool. It's it's, um, a lot of studies have been done on it. um, And it was also 
created by a woman, which is always great, right? Nice. Psychology is traditionally kind of a older white male field. And so I always love when there's, there's women involved. Awesome. Um, but her name was Francine Shapiro. Um, unfortunately, I think she passed last year, maybe the year before. Um, but she was studying, she, she was a researcher. Um, and so she found that she got very emotionally upset about something. I don't remember what it was, but she was just bothered. Um, and so she went outside for a walk and she was walking in a park that had these rows of trees and birds were flying back and forth through the trees. Um, and she was watching them as she was walking. And she realized that when she got back to work or to the lab, she wasn't as upset. And so she thought, hey, there's something here, right? Yeah. So she really put a lot of time and effort into this theory. And like you have said, so many people, including myself, have seen such great results from it. And so basically what we do in EMDR, so it's, it's the bilateral stimulation of the brain. So again, I know kind of a big science term, but that just basically means left, right, left, right. And so we're getting the hemispheres of our brain to speak to each other and communicate. Mm. So when something traumatic happens, um, and again, you know, trauma, we usually think of big T traumas such as car accidents, sexual assaults, uh, things of that nature. But my view on trauma and a lot of clinicians these days, you know, it's any experience where you felt like you didn't have a choice. And so that can really kind of, like you said, these added stress accumulation of people making fun of you, your parents not paying attention to you, right? You know, all of these things start to add up um, and we start to build these ideas that we have about ourselves. Um, we call them the negative core beliefs mm -hmm. um, that aren't necessarily true, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and we kind of take these on. And when we're little, you say like, um, like I use an example of, you know, a third grade child yes. goes in and um, gets a didn't sleep the night or before or right. was confused about some element right. in math, yeah. does terrible on a math test. The teacher yep. says, oh, look at this test. Weren't you paying attention? Whatever. You go home and, you know, you, you, oh, it's OK. You're just not good at math or however it gets put in their brain. But yep. a single incident like that can lay the foundation for this person their mm -hmm. whole life mm -hmm. thinking that they're not good in math. And so what happens is they get nervous and then they don't perform or they don't sign up to take certain classes because their belief is I'm not good in math. And then it just builds on it and they become an adult who could be very brilliant at math, but because that was, you know, a traumatic event, it was overwhelming for their system. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm being, you know, I'm not doing okay. I'm, I'm a, you know, it was tied to their, um, their value in some way. And so it yes. set it in like stone. I'm not good at math, period. Yep. And that is, that's spot on of how these negative core beliefs start to work. And so we actually form neural networks. So in our brain, you know, that you would have like a hub that's the I'm bad at math hub, right? Yeah. And so then it just all starts to go there. And all of a sudden you have this hub that's like, you know, this big, right? That you're like, whoa, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm bad at math. You know, after that third grade test, I got so embarrassed that I kind of just stopped trying, right? Mm -hmm. Or I got so down on myself or you know, my confidence was rocked, right? That I just never tried again. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you think about it when you're an adult in the third grade, like that was such a long time ago, you were so little, you didn't get a good sleep, but in your third grade brain, you don't have that lens. Right. Um, and so that's what we do in EMDR. So it's a great example. So I'm going to use that example. Um, but what we do is take these stored memories we bring them into working memory. So let's bring up this third grade math test when your teacher was like, wow, you failed in front of the whole class and really embarrassed you, right? Or, you know, whatever it may be. We put in a debt, we work with the memory. We put an adaptive lens on it, such as- you, When you say work with the memory, do you mean like kind of recall as much as possible around yep. it? Okay. Yep, exactly. So with the bilateral stimulation, so the left, right, left, right, um, I use buzzers. Mm -hmm. Some people do um, eye, like a arm movement. 
my arms get too tired. Um, but, and also, well, the other thing I use the hand and I use the buzzers in my therapy. And I really like that because it allowed me to close my eyes and, and And be more inward and, and focus. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, all the different ways, but for some people, it probably works better, different, different types, but I really liked being able to have my eyes closed and focus more in. So, yeah. yeah, you're totally right on that. So thank you. There's so many pieces that sometimes I get down my train. So please stop yeah. me. But so basically, yes, we recall the memory, right? And we um, really do a lot of work with the body. And so um, there are people that say like, I don't remember when I was seven. I hope that's okay. And so I always say like, um, you know, when you hear like a song that you like heard in high school that was like, just reminds you of like having fun with your friends and like a really carefree life, you know, that song is sound. Mm -hmm. So that's not a picture memory, but you still can feel that feeling in your body of how happy you were when you listen to that song. Right. And so memories are pictures, they're sounds, they're smells, um, and they're, they're located in our bodies. Um, and so trauma gets stuck right in our body. And so that's why this EMDR is so fascinating and you know so awesome is that this really works on a somatic level um you know because you know talk therapy is wonderful processing is wonderful um you know don't get me wrong right yeah but this is a really client guided process uh and and the client doesn't really talk you know like I let you know I'm there with you um but this is a lot of internal stuff because when we start talking, we get pulled out of the processing. So I actually ask yeah. clients not to talk a lot, which is kind of strange, right? Because usually mm-hmm. therapists want you to talk a lot. Um, but I really want you to be in that mode of processing. I don't want to pull you out. Yeah. Um, and we're really good at pulling ourselves out of our emotions, right? Sure. Cell phones, uh, food, alcohol, drugs, whatever it may be. And so this is a time to really focus on sitting in the, in the yuck. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I know a lot of people could be kind of afraid of the yuck, right? We, we talked definitely. it away for a reason. Oh, definitely. We did not like it. We didn't. Want oh, it. definitely. Um, right. And I know that, that the process involves as long as it takes to develop some safety first Oh yeah, and yep. having that safe place to go and all of that before you even ever approach oh, yeah. the yuck. Oh, yeah. And yep. that made a big difference because I had, when I was first told and recommended, had EMDR recommended to me, I was like, yep. oh no, I ain't going there. Well, oh, then, totally, you right? know, I'm, I'm doing okay. Like, yeah. I think I can survive just fine yeah. without having right? to go to that place again. And, um, and I didn't appreciate how much time would be spent on giving me that sense of safety before yes. I went there. Yes, so I really never felt pushed into a place of discomfort. And, yep. you know, as um, any good provider is, is, you know, yes. nostalgia. it's just such an important aspect. I, as I understood it, such yeah. an important aspect of. Oh my gosh. So there's, there's eight phases in EMDR. Um, and the fourth phase is the reprocessing phase. And so that's when you really get into the yuck, if you will. Um, and so phases one through three are really important. And I really take my time with those phases to ensure that the client trusts me, mm-hmm. they trust the process. Um, because like you, you know, when my therapist suggested EMDR, I was like, what? You know, first I was confused, right? And then she yeah. explained science and I was like, okay. And then I was like, yeah, no, that, you know. And so it is, you know, it, it's, I don't want to sugarcoat. It's not fun, uh, right? It's, it's really hard. But knowing that you are doing something different than processing your emotions in just your brain, yeah. you're processing them throughout your entire body yeah. and the left, right, left, right. So the bilateral stimulation, the, there's a few theories on it, but one of the main theories is that in REM sleep, so the REM our eyes go back and forth in that, Mm -hmm. right? And that helps our brain process information while we're sleeping. Mm -hmm. And so we're triggering that body experience while we're awake. And so this left, right, left, right keeps our nervous system calm enough to go into the trauma, but also helps our brain and our bodies process it. 
Yeah. So that's just a little nerdy science part. Um, but it's just, it's fascinating to me. It really it's is. Really and you um, know, I, I just to kind of give an idea, because I know for myself, I had to read about a lot. And, and that's the other thing is that mm -hmm. I was reading from all of these people whose trauma work and whose I respected so much, you know, right. Levine and the, um, the body yeah. keeps the score and yeah. all that's of these people who are saying <laughs> what a gift this mo modality is. And I'm yes. like, okay, well, I can't like these people I really trust them. I, I respect yeah. their work. Yeah. So I have to give it a certain level right off the mm -hmm. bat of uh, mm -hmm. credibility. And, um, mm -hmm. and, but I really felt like, even though these people are saying that, and it helped me a lot to encourage right. me to go, but I yeah. still kind of felt like, you know, I probably am not going to have that kind of experience. Yeah. I just, for whatever reason, I just yeah. thought I, yeah. I probably, you know, it's not going to hurt, might help a little, but I didn't expect to have like, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And right. just to share, like, I don't want to go into the whole thing because that would take too much time, but I just want to mm -hmm. share a little bit because I think it is so valuable. And maybe you would share just a little bit, whatever you feel comfortable around your experience. But like I said, we took our time. We did, we got into a safe place yeah. where I knew that if things started getting really dicey for me, mm -hmm. I could just step out and I, yes. I had a safe place in, in my body to yep. return to. So that was, you know, definitely fundamental. It was mm -hmm. um, very well established before we went into any of the memories. Yes. And like you said, we don't have to have like this you know, moment by moment clarity around everything that happened, your mind um, and your body has mm -hmm. enough of a memory. It does not yes. have to be just, yes. the, you know, uh, all, all of the details you've yeah, got enough, true, right. Yeah, to work, well, you know, it. it, it's in your yeah. body. Right? Exactly. What wires I have. What? Yeah. I have a big, I had a somatic practice, meaning I um, work a lot with my nervous system and, and kind of uh, can interpret the different sensations that I might have in my body. A little bit of anxiety is going to feel like a, a, a movement in my, my belly, like a mm -hmm. uneasiness and things like that. So yeah. I was very curious as these memories or, or even the thought of contemplating these memories were coming up, I would have associated um, somatic experiences, you yeah. know, my, usually in through yeah. my, my gut and things like yeah. that. And yeah you know, going to, um, and I was really felt led, like I didn't know how it would all lay out in the beginning yeah. Yeah. and, yeah. um, just kind of sitting with it. And I didn't have like this, uh, firm memory. Cause it was when I was maybe two or three years old, this, yeah. this feeling of not being safe in the world yeah. or not being noticed. Yeah. Um, I was the sixth of seventh children, six of wow. seven children. And I, yeah. I know life was busy around yeah. there, you know? And one of the things I struggled with is nobody really cares about me. No one, like no one's even yeah. noticing me. And I yeah. had this, it may or may not be true and it doesn't matter because it's how it oh. registered for me. So I had this vision of me yes. in the playpen standing there, like somebody, Please. come and pay attention yes. to me, oh. you know? And again, I don't know if that was like uh, factual, but it was what was stuck. And yes. so that's what mattered. Yes. So that's what I brought up. Yes. And that's what, you know, I went back and thought about that and, and just let it kind of wash over me and let the different things come in. And by the mm -hmm. end, I was, um, I had seen my older self Yes. come and be with my little self yes. and come and we were having so much fun and we were so that memory that when I started I was all choked up and crying yeah, right. about it and just right. holding right. on to all that yeah. pain yes yes after the treatment I looked back at that and I was smiling and laughing because right. that connection with my older self yes. and my two-year-old self was so beautiful and strong it was that memory lost all of its charge for me. And then yeah. I went out into the world after that markedly different. Like, of course, everyone is here for me. Yeah. Like right. without a doubt, like it was a huge shift. And I had a, the experience of really working on many memories mm -hmm. for myself. And, mm -hmm. and some of them, I got shifts. Yes. And some of them were just too big. Like this one, I could not work through on my own, mm -hmm. even though I had tools and I used some things yeah. that had worked for other ones. Yep. There were certain of them and there were like three or four mm -hmm. that I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything with. I didn't feel yes. any shift. Right. And those right. are the ones I brought to EMDR. 
Mm-hmm. And those are the ones I, ex- I did experience those big shifts. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. And, you know, I, I think that's just a, a perfect example. Um, you know, that was obviously pre-verbal, right? Yeah. So a lot of people remember when they're very young, some people don't. But like you said, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. I know that really trips people up. Like, yes. well, is it true? And it's like, I, it's okay. You know, it's how you felt, right? Yes. And so that's such a great example, you know, of, of you not feeling seen or heard. And as humans, that's really all we want, right? But at two, you started that neural network of nobody cares. I'm alone. I'm by myself. You know, kind of whatever else filtered into that, right? And so... I love that you, you know, I don't know if you'd use the term like oldest, wisest self or things like that. My higher Um, self I tend to to use for. Yep. 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 So that's a, that's a DBT ish sort of, uh, that's dialectical behavior therapy slash internal family systems Mm -hmm. and internal family systems is parts work. And I love using parts. Um, so it's a big component. Yes, right. Because there's yeah. so many different parts of us, right? There's our the child us, the teenager, you know, maybe the mean girl, the judge, the protector, right? And we've got to work with everybody in order to get through these memories. Um, and so I love that you put the adaptive lens on, right? That I was the six out of seven, really had nothing to do with me as a person. Yeah. My mom and dad were slammed. Uh, I'm I'm fine. I have people yeah. in my life who care about me. You know, and, and so it, it sounds so simple, but it really is so profound because these beliefs run so deep, yeah. so deep. And like you said, you know, when in the beginning with the memory, you're all choked up, right? You yeah. feel like a rock, yeah. you know, it, it's so interesting, you know, because I watch people that sounds kind of strange, right? But I'm watching you to make sure, you know, kind of body stuff and making sure you're staying in your window of tolerance, which means kind of like you said earlier, if people there's always an eject button. If it's too much, you can always get out, right? Always. I haven't had that happen yet, um, but maybe it will one day, maybe it won't. Um, but that's a lot of the prep work yeah. goes into that of, yeah. of how much can you handle? Yeah. Anyway. It speaks well, to your, your intuition as to how much people can handle as you're guiding them though. Yeah. But that's never happened for you. So that's Luckily, amazing. yes. Yeah. And if it does, that's okay, right? It, yeah. it happens, but I, I really take it, the safety part very seriously, right? And mm-hmm. So like you said, you start out like a rock, your stomach probably hurt, you were choked up, you know, and then when you're, you're, you processed it, you know, people sit up, they sit back, they take a big, deep breath. Like, it's just, it's fascinating to watch it in real time, you know, and they probably don't even realize that that's happening for them. No. So I do say like, oh, do you notice that you sat back? Do you notice that you're able to use um, a strong voice? Do you notice that your hands aren't clench to get right you know or do you notice that you've stopped squirming around or you know kind of thing or move I shouldn't say squirming moving around you know things like that and they're like wow no um and it's just you know it's it's just it's so cool um I just can't say enough about how healing it is because again it this is body stuff right Right. and so we're used to talking it out which is great like I said talk therapy is wonderful and this really gets at much deeper level yeah. Um, than the talk, than the talk right. there. And, so. you know, it's just recognizing it's not, doesn't have to be either, or there are just certain things that, you know, are, are more effective for different yeah. types of um, exactly. needs. And exactly. I have a lot of people who feel like they've failed because they've been through talk therapy and have come out the other end and then they don't feel like they're done. They may recognize, yes. you yes. know, I have a lot more awareness. I have a lot more uh, mm-hmm. introspection, something valuable, yes. but yes. I'm still stuck. Yes. And so that's why I really, really want people to understand that when mm-hmm. it comes to trauma and accumulated stress and things that happen to us, especially not exclusively, but especially when our brains are developing and we're trying to make sense of the world, yes. like there's a different type of treatment that is going to be effective for those things. And it's certainly not you that you didn't um, you know, didn't do the therapy right or whatever yes. it is. Yes. It's just, you can't reach these places through totally. those channels. Totally. So what you do is you give people, you know, the, the channel you, you find that. And it's just so, um, 
so beautiful and so powerful. Yes. And I know that you've probably seen it over and over, but the way I see it um, for, you know, the people that I work with, which are people that have these unwanted challenges with food, but it could be anything. It could be, you know, I struggle. I keep getting into the same type of relationship or I keep showing up in relationship in the same way that sabotages or, you know, it makes it not a healthy nourishing relationship or, you know, uh, career wise, I, I have this talent and I, for some reason, I'm still, you know, shoveling snow or whatever it is like I, and, um, so anytime we want to change and Mm -hmm. where we feel stuck and we know that we're meant for something more, or we know that we want to be free of, of our addictions or whatever it is, you know, we have to go back to our nervous system, to our, our traumas, um, And really release those so that we can be that full expression of ourselves as opposed to the person that our trauma brain, for lack of a better word, uh, created us to be. Yes. And yeah. you're, I, I, I want to mention something so important. You know, like you, you said that, you know, the, the clients who have done a lot of therapy but still feel stuck. Yeah. I love those clients. Those are my favorite, right? Because yeah. all of that work that they've done is going to assist them so much in EMDR that fast tracks them, you know? Um, and so I, I really have a special place in my heart for people who have done a lot of talk and just feel like they are still stuck. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I agree with you, you know, that it's, it's these, you know, our trauma brain keeps us in this box of someone that we aren't and it's beliefs that have been accumulated from all around um, in our lives, whether it's parents, teachers, bosses, relationship, you know, whatever, everywhere. And it's like uh, TV, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Media, social media, you know, whatever. And it's like, is that really me? You know, like, is that really who I am? Is that really what I like? Is that how I want to show up in the world? And it's like, no, this is all kind of crafted for us. Mm -hmm. And so I see EMDR is just busting through that. Right. And, and really trying to figure out who are you? Yeah. at your core and not who everybody else has told you you are. Yeah, that is so powerful. And that's such an important aspect. I think mm-hmm. of uh, certainly of my work, like living authentically for myself mm-hmm. and, you know, that, that confusing place of not really knowing who, who you are, knowing right. who you think you should be, but, but yes. not really knowing who, who you are. And yes. life is just so, uh, so much more beautiful and you feel yes. secure in the world when you're right. showing up as, as who you are. So totally. those kinds of things where the, where the goal, where the end product is you yeah. being able to be more you like that to me, I'm yeah. just, I'm yeah. just so excited. I want to ask you as we're kind of um, wrapping up our time, I I know that you bring some unique aspects to um, this, this process and, and I'd love to hear about any of them and all of them. But one of the things that I know we talked about before is how you are willing to kind of um, do some intensive type of work. And for me, that is always something that um, is, is really beautiful because, you know, it's frustrating when you're ready for change and you're right at that point and you have to space things out over, you know, depending on how you can schedule and all the things, you know, for something that may not have to take a long time for you to have to drag it out over three months or whatever, or longer, whatever, um, is really frustrating. And the other thing that I just thought of as I'm saying that is EMDR is well known, correct me if I'm wrong, but for not being like a long-term thing, you know, people in talk therapy, I've been in therapy seven years or something. And and for people, for me to say, you know, I went to a few sessions of EMDR and got this huge breakthrough. Now, granted, I'm someone who has been doing the work for a while. So I did expect for myself to have um, a little bit quicker, but that is something else that's really appealing about it is that it is not years of, you know, appointment after appointment. So would you speak to that just briefly and also about, um, the really cool ideas that you have around the intensive sessions. Yeah, sure. Um, so that's such a great point, you know, and I think, you know, one of, I don't know, maybe you might get this question and I think it's fairly common in the healing world, right. But how long is this going to take? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I, and I always, you know, I like to add humor whenever possible. And, you know, sometimes my jokes are funny. Sometimes they aren't right. <laughs> Um, but you know, like, I wish I had a crystal ball and I don't, um, and it really depends kind of, like you said, on 
uh, the background, right? The therapy background. So how, how prepped are you? How resourced are you? Um, I guess the, the word for that would be like, do you have good coping skills? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and if you do, that can help move you along. Right. And so, um, but you're right that it's, since it's so intense, the duration is truncated. Mm -hmm. So I can't give like, oh, it's only six months. You only need three sessions. Right. But at the same time, you are correct that you won't, you know, if you were my client, you know, we wouldn't be doing EMDR for years. Right. Because Mm -hmm. you really are working with the body. Um, and so when you flush all of that out and, and start to build these adaptive net neural networks, there's not stuff there anymore. And, you know, you're kind of, you've cleared these blocks, you've cleared these neural networks. Um, and so I'm not saying like, oh, you're cured and everything's rainbows and puppies, right, right. Right? but you know, a word that you used earlier that things that really trigger people around whatever it may be, you know, family, food, um, relationship, you know, they just don't, bug you anymore you know like it's just not something that would have completely ruined your day made you go off the rails right you're just kind of and and over there act in a way where you're like yeah that's not me yes why why am i like yes yeah those are the things where you know like something's up there something's going on i I need to look at that yeah, yeah about my own process you know, I, I think I, like you, I had a healthy skepticism, right? And then it yeah. happened and I, I, I felt better in the immediate sense, but I was kind of waiting, excuse me, to see, you know, and, and there was a day that I, somebody made a comment, you know, and, and I usually like just would have been so mad and maybe ate too much and maybe drank too much, who knows, you know, yeah. maladaptive coping skills. And I remember being in my car and it was a few hours later and I was like, wow, you know, like I went to work, I did my thing. I, you know, like I'm going to go to the gym, you know, like it just like, yeah, it hurt my feelings at the moment. And I was like, oh gosh, this person really is negative, you know, or, or that was a negative comment, you know, but instead of just like completely. So then after that, I was like, okay, I'm a believer in you. It wasn't proof of the old thought system anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It It was just a thing that, that happened and it was on this person or whatever. You got to still be you. Yes. What they, what happened, what they said didn't yep. change you. It didn't, didn't nope. mean anything about you. Nope. Yeah. And, and so I just, I felt so confident. Empowered. Yeah. I, yeah. So empowered, you know, kind of like you said, those old neural networks, you know, I like to say that sometimes our negative ones are like the Grand Canyon. They're yeah. so carved out, right. Yeah. That it's easy. You just go right into it. Yeah. Um, but there's also the positive side, right. And, and that, that's like a little Creek sometimes, you know, we never think like, what if, the good thing happens. We always think like, what if the bad thing happens? Right. Right. Um, so yeah, so that's just part of my process and kind of seeing that progress is that it can be kind of a slow process, right? Mm-hmm. Like a slow understanding of it, or it yeah. can be also very immediate, yeah. um, you know, where you're like, holy crap, I feel so much better on a day-to-day yeah. basis. Um, and so intensives, like you yeah. said, I'm, I'm really excited about these. This is a relatively new thing that I've been doing. Um, and I just find it a bit hard, you know, it's not like it's impossible, but in the, in the traditional 50 minute therapy session, you know, we do a little talking, right. Then we start to open up the targets. So targets are things that you'd like to work on. Those are the memories or beliefs. Um, and then, you know, I, we really, you know, kind of go in with our flashlight, go in pretty deep. Right. And then, you know, time is up. And so I want to make sure we close that, right? So I don't just send you out into the world all wide open. Right. Um, and so progress can just be tough. Not saying it's impossible, but for people with complex trauma, um, you know, or, or added stress, like you said, you know, just a lot going on. Um, I've been doing four hour chunks at a time, which seems really scary, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's so cool because with the gift of time, you know, we really can get through so much. And I'm finding that a lot of my clients like those versus seeing me once a week, every, you know, usually we would do, you know, an intensive and then maybe like a check-in session. And so they become kind of like monthly, Mm -hmm. but they're really deep and charged, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, And so we take breaks, obviously, you know, we, we have, you know, I have, 
sparkling waters or snacks that we can have, you know, like we're, you know, it's not like, yeah, but it is just, you really, you know, the clients are so energized by how much they're processing. Exactly. I'm energized, you know, it's, yeah. it's really, that just, yeah, bring so yeah. much um, enthusiasm to the process, yeah. like, you know, and motivate. Yeah. yeah. I can definitely see just from my own experience, how mm. I didn't feel done. Yes. Like, I'm like, whoa, I'm yeah. right there. Like, yeah. something in there. Right. You know? right. Right. Yeah. So allowing for that space and letting yes. it be what it is. I mean, that's the whole point is we're, we're diving in. We're mm -hmm. asking the body to share wisdom and mm -hmm. to come forth and all of that stuff and to allow it to do that in a, in an atmosphere that is spacious as opposed to, okay, let's go, you know, Hurry time's up, right? yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, is, is really beautiful. I can see how that would just oh, make the whole yes. process more effective, more, okay. yep. yeah, more. Yeah. Just, I love, I love them. I, I just, I think they're so awesome. I'm so glad that I've dipped my toe in yeah. to that world, you know, and, and so yeah, four hours at a time. And, you know, sometimes people want to do four hours one day, four hours the next day, you know, like I can definitely be flexible with like a retreat where you go in and you exactly. do not leave the same person. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that um, works really well, I would imagine, for um, clients who may want to see you and, and may not be in the state. They could come to you and, you know, spend a weekend yes. with you if you've yep. you know, kind of established some, yep. some, some, uh, I guess, foundation yeah. um, yes. over, over uh, distance and then actually yes. come here for the treatment. That could be something really effective because finding the right therapist, you know, it, there may not be the one that you click with yes. in your area. And that's yes. such an important thing. So oh, it's, it's the most yeah. important, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's what I tell family and friends, you know, who are looking for a therapist. I'm like, you've got to click with them and, you know, trust your gut. Yeah. We're so, I, this could be a, a, a whole other podcast, right? Sure. But as women, we've been told not to listen to our gut. Mm -hmm. And as women, we are, most of us are so intuitive. Absolutely. Um, and so the, the right therapist you know, you're not going to, you're not going to go deep. You're not going to do the work if it's not the right one. Yeah. So, Cause it's all about letting down your guard. Yes. That's like the, if, if that can't be established, then yep. you're not going to go to the places that you need to get to. Exactly. So it is just such an important thing. And, yes. and it really, um, again, like, it, like we started this conversation, you know, um, just with me being so impressed with, with how you're looking at the process and, and not just showing up to work and okay, I did my sessions or whatever. You're like, how can this be better? How is this working yes. for, you know, yes. and really refining it. So that's just such a, a beautiful thing. And that I um, appreciate about you and, and happy that, you know, you're out there doing that for people. Yeah. Um, I'd love for people to, you know, just be able to learn a little bit more from you and about you. What would be the best way for them to do that? Yeah. So um, they can go to my website. Um, and so that's www.seedsofstrengthco for Colorado.com. Um, and um, my email um, is Joan, so J O A N at seeds of strength co again, Colorado.com. Um, so I would say those are probably the best ways to get in touch with me right now. Yeah. Um, and I know you've got some information on your website, you've got some I resources, do. Do. Um, yep. all kinds yep. of things. Yeah. Just yep. to help people who want to know a little bit more. And um, so I just appreciate you so much. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate the work you're doing in the world. And I really hope that, you know, the um, people will find you that, that, yes. you know, you'll be able to, to touch more lives and, yes. um, and all of that. So yes. yeah, thank you so much. You're blessing to, to all of us. And, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your work as well. Thank you for having me today. Of course. Absolutely.